hello, this is Mr. Gentry, and today I'm going to record my first podcast, and you have the um, pleasure of listening to me speak and record myself for the first time. We're actually going to be going through uh, something called uh, development and cell differentiation. We've already gone through the lessons of mitosis and meiosis. We've already learned that Mitosis is a process of asexual reproduction where you produce cells that are genetically identical. You know that meiosis is for the purposes of sexual reproduction for develop, producing uh, four cells that are genetically different. Now, how does that tie into this lesson? Well, one of our goals today is to understand how cells become specialized for different functions. We all know that we are made of cells, that's one of the characteristics of life, And but how do we get from one cell to many through asexual reproduction? So let's go through this introduction and I have some questions that I want you guys to uh, think about as we go through this. We all know that there's different types of cells found in living things. We know that bacteria cells are different from that fungi and plants and also animals. We know that there's variation between the cells of any organism and from the cells of an organism within an organism itself. For instance, uh, the cells of a leaf are different from those of a root. So here's some of the questions I want you to think about. What are some of the characteristics that are common to all cells? Remember when we last year when we were looking at the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, uh, we looked at some of the commonalities and the differences, and so you can think back to that. Uh, second question, what are ways in which cells may be different from each other? So there's lots of differences. For example, what's the differences between plants and animals? Cells. Uh, next question, list as many different types of cells in your body as you can. Now you may or may not know that the human body as a full grown adult actually contains about 100 trillion cells. Uh, that estimate is larger than the total number of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. So that may seem like quite a bit. Well, it would if we were just a big lump of trillions of cells. But each of our cells has specialized functions. For example, muscle cells, right? So think about what the purpose muscle cells do in our body. Now, each of those cells have a specific job. Uh, as you list those in your mind or on a piece of paper, go ahead and uh, think about what function those cells do. Now the last question is really to the core of this lesson. If all the cells in your body arose from a single cell, how do you think they may have become so different from each other? Now I've hinted to this in past lessons, the process of development is actually a process of mitosis. So each cell is genetically identical. Now, as you develop, you know that you become a, a conglomerate of several different uh, specialized cells, nerve cells, muscle cells, bone cells, blood cells of all types. Uh, you can really think of us as um, a cooperative of several different single-celled organisms working together to exist. Uh, so keep that in mind as we go through this lesson. So let's go into the, the heart of this. Now, during development, our cells do become specialized. So how do we do that? You know that we all started off as one cell, uh, the fertilized egg. So a sperm and egg come together to form a zygote. Now, all living things actually go through a specific uh, developmental stage, or I should say all multicellular living things such as worms, plants, um, our pets, us, actually go through a stage called an embryo and eventually uh, develop into adulthood. Now part of this is actually from those single cells and to the division of cells, cells actually become specialized and 
become specialized through this process called differentiation. So that's the technical term. That's a term you should know, you should write down. So what is differentiation? It is the specific process through which cells become specialized or uh, perform different functions. So how does a, a embryo, or sorry, a zygote go from just a cluster of cells to cells that are muscle cells or cells that are bone cells or cells that are blood cells? That is differentiation. Um, something that we'll talk about in another podcast is that stem cells, which we can get from uh, embryos, and that's probably the most common thing that we can think about or that we've heard in the news, is our cells that actually can develop into other type of cells. So be thinking about that as well. But as I said, we'll get into that later. All right, so when we think of development, and embryos, we often think of this picture. It's a picture of a developing uh, human embryo. Uh, but how does it get from a uh, single cell to this uh, more specialized state? Well, let's go through that process now. All right, here's a map of early development. Uh, what you see is we start off as that fertilized egg or zygote. This is where the nuclear material of the sperm and egg combine and the process of cell division starts. As I said, this is a process of mitosis. Uh, division or cleavage starts and we go from one cell to two, two to four, four to eight, and this is where we get the eight cell stage, eight to 16, and so on, until cleavage actually starts to occur, or sorry, uh, the blastula starts to form. A blastula is one of the first milestones of development. A blastula is actually a hollow ball of cells. And what starts to form is a blastocele. And this blastocele is actually a hollow area with fluid that's actually generated from uh, the cells themselves. So they start to form their own internal environment. Um, we won't get into the details of that in this lesson, but what starts to happen next is actually one of the most important parts of our life. Now you may think of important milestones in your life as like your birthday or um, when you graduated from or when you're going to graduate from high school or going to graduate from college, maybe getting married, maybe having your first child. But actually the most important part of your life is gastrulation. If this doesn't happen, a lot of those other things won't happen or can't happen. Gastrulation is actually uh, where your germ layers are formed. This process is when the outer cells start to migrate to the inside of the cell and actually form three major layers. Once the gastrule is formed, you have the endoderm that's shown here in yellow. The endoderm means inner layer. You have a mesoderm. The mesoderm means the middle layer. And then the ectoderm, or the outer layer. Now these are important because this is one of the first steps that predetermine what cells are going to become what in your body. And we'll go into that in just a second. But for now, uh, let's take a look at what happens, uh, how these actually become different. All right, so part of the process of differentiation is merely location. Um, depending on what layer it is, it gets different signals to those cells to become different things. So as the development continues, we start to see uh, cells that are in the ectoderm, or the outer layer, or the external layer as it's labeled here, uh, can become skin cells, which makes sense. Or uh, what's a little less intuitive is um, brain cells, and also pigment cells, or uh, melanin-producing cells that, in your skin. Uh, the mesoderm, or the middle layer, actually becomes things like our muscles, from skeletal muscle, which actually moves our bodies, to cardiac muscle, which pumps blood through our bodies, to blood cells themselves, and smooth muscle, which actually helps move food through our um, in digestive tract. We also have the endoderm, which gives, uh, which is the inner layer, can give rise to things like pancreatic cells, thyroid cells, 
and lung cells, and then of course we have germ cells, uh, which eventually become our sperm and egg. Soon after fertilization, the egg cell starts to divide into two, four, eight cells, and so on, continuing to double the number of cells with each division. During this time, there is no increase in the mass of the cells. A circular ball of cells is eventually formed, called the morula. It gives rise to the blastula, and after further development, to the gastrula. As a result of the movements that take place during the formation of the gastrula, three embryonic germ tissue layers form, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. From these tissues, all the animal's organ systems develop. In addition to these germ layers, humans and other mammals develop four extra embryonic membranes. These are called the amnion, the yolk sac, the allantois, and the chorion. They provide the developing embryo with protection, nutrients, waste exchange, and regulation of gases and air. So how does this happen? So we have this development occurring. Uh, that eventually gives rise to a fully formed human baby, which then become an adult. Well, this isn't going to be something that's tested, at least for our class, unless you guys go on to medical school or some um, molecular biology class or development class. Uh, but for those of you who like to know the hows and the whats, um, a lot of how differentiation takes place is through signals uh, from other cells. And a lot of it's by location. For instance, uh, a lot of your cells actually have ways to contact each other and communicate with each other. Some of it are through notch ligands and notch receptors on the outside of the cell that communicate through touch. So depending, they need this touch to give them signals. For instance, they say, well, the, this is a ectoderm cell, you're a mesoderm cell, and that's going to give it a certain signal, and therefore uh, by following this pathway can actually turn on different genes. Now you can think of our genes um, and several groups of genes as being like books. And these books are similar to um, uh, what organs or what tissue we want to be produced. For example, there's a book that says you're going to be a skin cell. Or there's a book that uh, reads uh, how to be a brain cell and depending on what signal is what book is actually read in your genes or in your DNA so remember every cell in your body has the same exact DNA it's just which DNA is actually read or which book from the library of your DNA is read so depending on the signal and again you're not going to need to know all this but it could be TGFB beta or as uh, Dr. Herring, one of my professors, used to say uh, TGF beta, uh, BMP, FGF, uh, FIGUR, WINT. There's several different um, signals that are important in uh, development, but each of them are important in activating different books or different genes, sets of genes, that causes to cause cells to become what they are to become. So if it's supposed to be a muscle cell, it'll get a different signal than if it's going to be a brain cell, uh, which gets a different signal. And if you're interested, you can always look up more, take other classes, but this is not the scope of this uh, specific podcast. All right, so let's go ahead and do some review. Some of the major uh, steps of development, we all start off as a zygote, which is the combination of sperm and egg cells that were developed through meiosis. Uh, they all go through early division, which is uh, cleavage. Now this is uh, different than what we, a little different from what we studied in mitosis, because there's no cell growth. As the video explained, uh, there's no mass um, for, or added as the divisions uh, go on. Uh, the morula is the solid uh, multi-cell embryo which eventually turns into the blastula or the hollow embryo 
And then gastrulation form starts where the inner cells migrate in forming the three germ layers and the gastrula. And the three germ layers are the endo or inner layer, the mesoderm or middle layer, and the ectoderm or the outer layer. And each of those layers, because of their location and because of the signals that they get, uh, give rise to different types of cells. So that's differentiation as a whole. So I hope that this clears up some of the information that you'll find in chapter 10.4 and will help uh, you guys with your projects and uh, any questions that you might have on cell differentiation.